What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another podcast, Life Insurance Telesales Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Nidifan. We got my co-host, Austin Mitchell. What's up, man? Another podcast. Let's go. Yeah, glad to be back filming with you, dude. It's always fun. Dude, it's uh it's awesome. This is uh this is a podcast that we're just, like is is pretty much we, we're coming together and we're like, hey, how can we really impact the industry? How can we help people? really speed past the the learning curves to be able to actually be profitable as a telesales agent in 2024 um, or whatever year you're watching this, right? How you can actually grow and, and scale your business faster than we ever did. Cause it took a while to, uh, to actually figure out, but um, dude, what's uh what's been new with you, man? Uh, how's your week been so far weekend? Dude, the weekend was amazing. You know, I got to spend time with the family, go spend time in worship. And that was really good, man. So it's good to relax and uh you know kind of decompress off a week for sure. That's so. huge. You go to uh you go to Hope Church, right? Or is that the church you go to? Uh, that church? was yeah, we we went there this weekend. We were actually just trying it out. Yeah. Love it, dude. Cool. There you go. Yeah, it's super important. I've <laughs> I've seen like to be able to to really produce at a high level consistently is to be able to get those times, right? Like to be able to unplug out of the day to day. And I think like having a one time a week, right. Where you go, where you do go to church um, and you are able to kind of do some, some other stuff to really, really like rejuvenate your soul um, is super important. I've seen that that's really helped me stay consistent. Uh, I know for me, at least stay consistent over the long haul is being able to, to do those types of things, which is really cool. So that's uh that's dope, man. It's when it's when it's time to hammer down, it's time to hammer down. But, uh, you know, once you've done it for so long, you can really tell when you need to take a break rather than when it's just, uh, you know, you kind of being a sissy about it. <laughs> I mean, because yep. I mean, you could definitely get in your own head. But yeah, when you're on a run to, to have a big month, I mean, you got to take a little bit of time just to to reboot the body and, you know, get your head right and be ready to hammer back at it when a week starts. That's it, bro. Yeah, my weekend definitely did that. Um, and then uh had like I, I like to do sometimes, not like where it's like planned out, but sometimes where I'm just feeling it is uh is going to that like I, I go to the gym in the mornings, but like sometimes I'm feeling it like especially on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, that I'm just kicking back and I'm like, it'd be nice to go back to the gym. So I did some cardio and then uh and then uh went to the hot tub, did some sauna sessions. Uh, which was really good, especially because my lower back has been jacked up. But um, no, and then also watching March Madness, uh, that's always fun. Uh, it, it definitely like one thing I think to be successful, right, is uh, you see these people battling it out like crazy. You see like it's called March Madness for a reason because there's crazy upsets, people like that are lower seeds beating higher seeds, um, the the Davids beating Goliaths in, in the uh, – in the tournament you see like yesterday right this team's down 14 points with like two to three minutes to go all of a sudden they come back and they hit a buzzer beater to tie the game go into overtime it's just like it's cool and so it's a good part of of the year to be able to like okay we we've we've had our new year's resolutions we've had our uh things kind of come but like march madness is a time to really speed up it's the end of the first quarter uh really and so like we we have a one week left to go to finish this quarter out strong and so uh, I see a lot of correlations with that. So it's, it's fun to be able to watch, but then also see the correlation of that in, uh, and as well as business too. Yeah. So, I mean, like, and I love that you kind of touched on that because it's like, so you're saying you went to the gym again for the second time during the day after the fact, right? Yeah, bro. It's like, it doesn't have to be the gym, but it's like, you know, when you're taking that time off and you're trying to reboot, it's like, you did that at a pleasure not discipline like you you went to the gym the first time out of discipline and you went the second time just for pleasure mm -hmm. but it's like hitting just that one thing that like you're craving to do whether it's like hitting the basketball court or like going to the sauna whatever it is it's like doing that one thing out of pleasure and like releasing that different kind of dopamine like really yeah. just helps you like relax and kind of be centered again for sure yeah and i think like that's something about like I mean, there's a ton in here, like we could do a whole nother podcast on this, but I think I, I want to go a little bit deeper into this part. Like when, when we're trying to build a habit, when I, when I really am trying to implement something into my life, 
it's easy to want to like add 20 things into your schedule and like, then it becomes overwhelming and then you become exhausted, burnt out and you don't actually complete it. And so I actually want to, uh, what I like really want to embark on, on building in something else into my life, right? Like this podcast or, um, going to the gym or work, whatever it is. Right. Um, I want to go at it with a huge emphasis of longevity and consistency, and so it's easy to want to add a ton of things in there, right? Like, okay, that's awesome. Uh, it's good to to go to the sauna and hot tub. I'm going to do that every single day, uh, seven days a week. I'm going to be going to the gym 14 times a week. And I think a lot of times that's why things aren't sustainable. Um, and, and it feels unsustainable is because we can't actually commit to something for the long term. And so what I do is like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to have a non-negotiable where I'm going to go to the gym every single day. But then there's other times where I'm like, I would like to go to the gym. I'm, there's no pressure there. And I'm not going to hold myself to going again because I already hit my 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 daily discipline. I hit my non-negotiable goal that I can do every single day. Um, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to get a quick arm pump, do some cardio, and then go to the sauna, like just fun stuff. And so I think that's the same thing with business, right? Like we, we need to, especially if we want to really grow your telesales agency, uh, and really produce at a high level. It's like, hey, having those non-negotiables that every morning I'm getting up at 8 a.m. and I'm going to be dialing or I'm getting up whenever I'm on the phones by 8 a.m. and consistently hitting the phones. But then like you and I, dude, multiple times, like I remember last year uh, I had March Madness on and we'd hop on on a Saturday. Like it's not like something we have to do necessarily, yeah. but we'd hop on on a Saturday and just hit the phones for three, four hours quick, get a one to two apps and then we're done then we're, we're free to enjoy ourselves the rest of the weekend. But like, it wasn't a, a thing where it's like an expectation and there's a pressure there, but it's able to be like, we want to do it and we have the option. And I think like having the, giving yourself an option in certain aspects, not every aspect because there should be non-negotiables, but giving yourself an option and choosing like, there, I think there's the power in, in, in giving yourself an option to do or not and actually doing it th that allows you to create momentum into things you're actually deciding to do. Have you seen that as uh, well? I, th I think it's like, it's just having like the healthy work-life balance. Like yeah, we, we like choose optionally to work on a Saturday. Like it's not out of necessity. It's not out of like, you know, need or scarcity. It's uh, just out of like a want or like, hey, we want to hop on. Like maybe it's like, we enjoy work. Like I think we can both yeah. like agree me and you both enjoy work. We have a lot of fun together. Like, so if we want to hop out on a Saturday and like make a couple sales, like that was just something we do, but we didn't have like an unhealthy relationship with work. Like, yeah. you know, during the week, we didn't have to work a weekend out of necessity during the week. Like we had a healthy relationship with the work that we did Monday through Friday so that we actually hit and achieved our goals Monday through Friday, whatever we did Saturday, if we did anything at all was always extra. Yeah, pretty much always extra. So it's it's really just how you were touching before. It's building the small consistent wins and working up to that point to where you can you can accomplish everything you need to. Yeah. You know, Monday through Friday. I think, you know, you were saying about going to the gym, just getting like a small arm pump. I mean, yeah, I did the same thing. I always used to do this thing where I would like try to do something I just hated. Like, and yeah. for a while it was running, right? Like right now it's burpees. Like I just hate burpees and I let's like, so I do them every day. But whenever I first started running, it was like, you know, I wanted to just be a savage from the start and like run 10 miles and it like not break a sweat, you know? Yeah. But like, dude, I hadn't ran in like four years probably. And so like I ran a mile and like had shin splints <laughs> or like, you know, so it's like yeah. I had to start out doing like consistent daily things like i had shin splints i was like okay dude i'm just gonna walk the mile like every day until like my legs are feeling right boom now i'm gonna run the mile for a week and then i'm gonna bump it to two miles and it's like yeah. it builds and compounds over time and i think insurance agents should do kind of the same thing i think a lot of them want to come in and they're like i'm gonna do 400 dials in a day and like like make this crazy expectation and i wish they could do it but what you see a lot of times is that they come in they'll make 400 dials and then the next day they make 50 and it's like they burn yeah. themselves they didn't ramp up to those massive wins that they can achieve every single day yeah and it's like the the reason 
what what you're saying is ex- like perfect, right? Um, if you guys have ever read uh, the book Atomic Habits, uh, he talks about when you're trying to build a habit, it has to be so effortless that when it feels like becoming like work, you have to stop. And so this is a little bit different in terms of building this out in terms of like your sales abilities, because there has to be times where you just have to use brute force and go through it and just make it happen. But there's other times um, that like when you are trying to build a habit, uh, James Clear talks about in his book that there was a guy uh, that would every single morning, he would wake up at his first time his alarm goes off and he'd go to the gym and his his uh, there's a rule that he had for the first six weeks that he can never stay more than five minutes. So he'd get his shoes on, get his get his whole like whatever he's wearing on his, all his clothes. Um, he goes to the gym. He does like he's good. Doesn't even do like one set, maybe one set or two sets. And then he leaves. And so the lesson in that what he learned, which he ended up losing like 100 to 150 pounds in the next like year or so. Um, but it's mastering the morning, it's mastering the habits and the routine. And so you have to master, like, if you want an outcome and a goal, I think there takes forethought and intentionality to master the first two to three steps before then, because it wasn't him actually going to the gym and mastering to get there because that's the easy part. The easy part is actually doing the work when you're at the gym. Um, cause like rarely you're just going to go to the gym and do nothing. You're probably going to do some type of workout and cardio or lifting weights, like in, in my experience in resistance training. But then on the other side, it's saying, how can I make sure that it's ingrained in my head that I do the same three to five things every single morning before, like to be able to get to the gym, to be able to get to the outcome. So what I do, what I like, I really took this into my hands and it was like, I'm, I need to do this is like, Hey, every morning, every night before I wake up, I put my clothes out, all my clothes that I'm going to wear to the gym. Then I'm going to go upstairs, go to the bathroom. And it takes like the fourth on an intentionality to really think through the th- first three to five steps. But then after that weigh myself, then I put all my clothes on. Then I get the drinks out. Of, like I get my pre-workout, get my water. And then I go down back downstairs, grab the keys, go to the gym. And I know like exactly what I'm going to do at each point in time. Um, and so it's the same for you guys, right? To be able to master waking up every single morning um, and dialing at 8 a.m. to build that habit, there has to be some forethought be- before it, right? And it starts the morning before or the 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 evening before, right? Writing down a to-do list, exactly what your first five steps in the morning are going to be. I think it even starts the by the end of the day, when you end your day, setting daily commitments for the next day. I'm going to make 200 dials tomorrow. I got, I got to follow up with this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, and writing it down and writing out your to-do list for the next day because your subconscious mind never sleeps. And so if you can build these habits into your life, and then also just to keep going on that, once you do that and write your to-do list, your follow-ups for the next day, then it's being able to think about what your first five steps are going to be. Hey, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to like do whatever on my phone for five minutes or whatever, um, or not. Right. Like what I did is like, I actually have, I just got a new phone and I have my other phone. Um, so what I do is to be able to stay off of like, just to keep my mind fully focused on the gym is I wake up and this is the only phone I'm using. And I deleted everything off of it. Um, Slack emails, most text messages. I don't have service on that one. I just plug into the Wi-Fi. But um, I can't receive like regular text messages besides my wife texting me um, and I can only, only listen to podcasts, but like having your focus on that. Right. And then what you do is you figure out, OK, what are, what else am I going to do? Am I going to get coffee? Am I going to journal? Am I going to read? Am I going to pray? Am I going to whatever, whatever you're going to do, figure that out. And then it all leads to you getting on the phone by 8 a.m. Yeah, man, I think that's super important. It's like I'm sure you can agree. I mean like as an entrepreneur and an insurance agent, it's like, you always feel like you have a lot of stuff to do. It's like, and we probably both have this, like a running to-do list. It's like, it never ends. It's always just being added to. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I practice this too. It's at the end of my day. It's like, you know, for today, Monday, the end of today, Tuesday is already going to be planned out. 
I don't start working Tuesday and wonder what I'm doing Tuesday. Like when I get on my computer, I automatically know what I'm doing for the day. And to be honest, there's like, there's no reason why your whole entire day shouldn't pretty much be planned out. And yeah. so th that habit every day, just, it, it helps you be the most efficient because it, yeah. it's easy to get lost in the sauce, especially if you have a, you know, a to-do list that's a mile long. Then you find yourself at the top of the to-do list. Hey, I'm going to get this done. Oh, I don't want to do the next thing below it. So I'm going to do the next thing below that. And you start skipping around doing different stuff. You're making dials here. You're calling a carrier here. Now you're following up with Miss Betty. Oh, no. Now you got to fix something for Miss Betty. You're back calling the, the carriers. And the next thing you know, it's been an hour and a half since you made a dial. And that kind of stuff will happen if your day is not structured. Like, if you have to do follow-ups, schedule, you know, 30 minutes for follow-ups with existing clients. If you have to call carriers, schedule 30 minutes to do, you know, calling your carriers. It, uh, it, it doesn't have to be as difficult as most people make it. If they would just structure it, they would see how easy it can become every single day. And it doesn't take a lot of time to, to implement that habit. Yeah. It's the last five, 10 minutes of my day and that's it. Yeah. And it's the little things that compound and, and add up over time. And I think like this is even deeper, right? Like deeper than the habits to be successful, right? The thing that all insurance agents that come into the business and, and master telesales and really get to the point where they're making 20 to 30, 40, 50,000 a month consistently, even a hundred thousand, right? Are people who take initiative. You have to have forethought. You can't let the industry take you by the horns. Like you have to be doing your own research. You have to be getting in programs and masterminds and communities by your, like yourself. Nobody's going to come and do it for you. And so you have to have those initial thoughts that like, if it's meant to be, it's up to me attitude, like having that mindset that I'm going to do literally whatever it takes to be successful. And one of those characteristics is having forethought, thinking through things ahead of time, exact, knowing exactly what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Not just saying I'm going to make $100,000 my first year in the business, but like, okay, cool. What am I actually going to do to do that? What do I? What are the inputs I need that are required to be able to get to the outputs that I need, right? It's, uh, I, it's crazy because I was listening to a podcast recently, either yesterday or today, um, talking about like I'm going to, oh, it was Dave Ramsey actually. And he was talking about, I'm going to master the inputs so that I can guarantee the outputs that I want in my life. And so this is the same thing with insurance. This is the same thing with like getting into a, this is a career. This isn't just a side hustle type business that you can come in here and make passive income. If you, if you're getting preached that you're in the wrong place, people are not telling you the truth. And if they're not telling you the truth about that, they're probably not telling you the truth about other things, right? About their leads being recycled and whatever. I could we could go on and on about it about this specifically in a different in in a different episode, but there has to be intentionality and forethought, like in in maturity. I think even coming yeah. into knowing like this is a real business. Most businesses aren't profitable for like five to ten years. This doesn't mean that that you have to have that belief knowing that that's going to happen, but like you have to have you have to come in knowing that this is a real business. There are real costs in this business. If you think you're going to come in with 50 bucks to your name and all of a sudden become a millionaire, like you have something else coming for you. You're probably going to be part of the 92% that fail. And so there has to be forethought. There has to be like actually thinking through and knowing and not being sold a dream and being like, have the blinds over your eyes and just like following blindly. But like, actually knowing this is going to take hard work. This is going to be the hardest thing that you ever do to master tell sales, to, to master this, the art of selling insurance. There has to, there's forethought that has to go into it. And it's going to be the hardest thing that you ever do. Like this yeah. is going to be one of the hardest things that you do is mastering this one skill of sales and mastering like being profitable in the business, right? This like making a true business is going to be the hardest thing you ever do because you probably haven't done something before like this. You probably haven't built a business before. And even if you have built a business, you haven't built a business in this day, day in this era, right? You could take your skills and, and character traits and beliefs that you've had in the previous business, but this is going to, if this is your first business, this is going to be the hardest thing that you have done up until this point. And so it's a matter of like, just 
digging in, committing to it, and then having the forethought and knowing like, hey, I'm going to, if it takes five years to start making 20 to 30,000 a month, it's worth it. It's worth it to actually have that freedom. I think yep. a lot of agents do don't come into this industry with the mindset that it's going to be hard. Like this is going to be, this is a hard industry. It is. It's, it's hard. It's simple, but it's hard. Like it's yeah. simple the things you have to do. And the only thing that I really see that <clears throat> this is kind of a broad generalization, but you know, the, the difference between top producers and people who you know are really struggling is they've just mastered the input. They've mastered like, you know, being consistent, putting in the input and optimizing what input they're really putting in. I mean, I'm sure you can attest like, dude, it was so frustrating for me when I first got in that business. It's like the yeah. people that were absolutely crush it, writing hundreds of thousands of dollars in annual premium a year. It sounded like, dude, it looked and sounded like it was just so easy. Yeah. It's like they weren't even trying. It's like they weren't even trying. They were putting yeah. up all these numbers all the time. And I was like, how are they doing it? All they had all they had done was just optimize the input that they were putting in. Yeah. They weren't wasting time on pointless things. They were just doing the boring work. Like they weren't overcomplicating the stuff that they had to do every day. And they were just consistent. Yeah, they can and consistent in terms of doing revenue generating activities. They made it like in, and you have to build up your tolerance. Like I, I didn't start working 12 hour days. Like I, I built up into that to where it's like I can do that and that's that's simple. And that's just anything that you're gonna do in life. It's gonna seem like a lot at first, but like over time, you're gonna build a tolerance, your body's gonna get used to what work actually feels like, and then you can do it at a high clip consistently over and over and over and over and over again. I think of the people who do 40, 50, 60, hundred thousand dollars a month in personal production. It takes work. When I did a hundred thousand dollars in personal production in 31 days, that was an all-out sprint. Like that was brute force. Like that was 12, 14 hour days. People don't talk about these things, but like that's what it took. It took every single day for 31 days straight to work, like just straight put my mind to it, make dials, like thousands of dials a week, setting consistent appointments, right? 30, 40, 50 appointments per week. That's when I was setting appointments. Um, it's doing massive, massive, massive activity, but your body builds up into that, right? Like I had a few months of experience before to where it's like, okay, I know what work feels like. I know where like an eight hour day kind of feels like in terms of being on the phone, I can push that to 12 to 14. Obviously that was a stretch, but like when you're starting out, like you have to train your body and mental toughness. Like it's funny because I, I don't know if you checked the, the, the group chat earlier today, but like I was listening to Andy Fursella talk about why he started 75 hard and like the, the actual like mindset behind it. And it was, it was this guy I forgot what his name was. Um, his name was the Iron Horse. I think it is. I don't. I don't know if that's exactly. I think that's his name. I don't know. Um, but it was this dude that did fifty triathlons in fifty days in fifty different states, and so in every single state he did a triathlon every day. And so what he did was by the third day after his third triathlon, he lost all of his toenails, and he's had forty seven triathlons still to go. And so he mastered mental toughness. And I think like for us as insurance agents to want to, like if you want to really scale and build your business, you have to have mental fortitude and toughness knowing that like you're going to get chargebacks. You're going to get bad leads. You're going to get bad numbers. You're going to like whatever you think, if you're coming into the industry, if you're a new agent, whatever you think, like how hard it's going to be, imagine it like a hundred times harder this, than it's going to be. And it's going to be things that you might not even, it's, you don't even know that could happen. Right. Like it's going to be things that you're not even prepared for, but it's are going to hit you. And then in those moments, I love Alex Ramosi talks about this. He's like that, like my mindset always going into that is this is what hard feels like when I committed to this, when I chose that I'm going to be the one in my family, that I'm going to be the one to actually have freedom because that all freedom comes at a cost. Everything worth it in life comes at a cost. But any like whenever something comes at me, and it's really hard and it's really difficult. I say, this is what hard feels like. And it's actually like that I've built my built a frame into this whole thing. Like that I actually get gratitude in those moments because I know, and it's like a, a, a confidence knowing that if I can get through this, 
that's just another barrier to entry to be able to get to my goals that is going to make it easier because that 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 one thing that happened is actually the thing that's going to take somebody else out or most people out. And so I can just simply outlast if I can get through this, I can actually get to the next level. And once I get to the next level, it's going to be a lot easier um, as you go. Like the, the, the monsters get harder, but like you get better, which is really yeah. cool. It's okay to face problems. He always like adds on to that as well. And he'll in the sentence with like, and that's okay. Yeah. You're having a lead problem this month and that's okay. It's not saying it's okay. Like to have a lead problem, but it's okay that you're, you're having these problems and facing them Yeah. to overcome them later. It's like, it's okay that you're going to face problems. Everybody's going to face problems. And one last thing we can touch on, I know we got to finish up here in a second, but um, you know, it is going to be hard guys. And you have to expect it to be hard. When I would set my goal for the month and I would backtrack my numbers, I would always overshoot so I could outproduce my goal. Like if my goal was 20 K in annual premium or whatever that looked like, it was, I would backtrack the numbers and overshoot them. Let's say my average annual premium was a thousand dollars per policy. Yeah. It would, I would run my numbers at $800 per policy. So it was like I had to overcompensate to hit those goals. Like I would hit it before, but if I ran into a problem somewhere within the month, I would be ahead of schedule. Yeah. Like I didn't want to face that mental block that like I wasn't going to hit it. So I would just overcompensate. And if you blow past your goal and you do better than your goal that month, I mean, that's a win regardless <laughs> so yeah man i think we touched on a lot of good subjects today though man it was amazing yeah and i, I like guys taking from this right and, and don't forget to invest in in hitting that subscribe button right now um for for to be able to get all the updates on the podcast but guys for you where you're at right now the take the key takeaways of this podcast is one it's going to be harder than you think two build habits and have intentionality of exactly what you want to accomplish and build habits on what that person that has that lifestyle does and has, right? So here's what I mean. If you want to be a million dollar earner, right? A year, a million, a millionaire, right? Actual making a million dollars a year net after everything. What does that person have? What do they believe about the world? What habits do they have in their life? How are they, how'd they get there, right? Maybe they're, they're chilling, not doing as, as hard as they think, but like to be able to get to that spot, what person do I need to become? That's the mindset I think of and think through, like, who do I need to become to get to that next level? Because it's not like, it's not crazy. It's not rocket scientists. Like you don't have to be a rocket scientist to actually get there, but you have to think about what, like one thing that helps me is what, does that person, what Johnny that makes a million dollars a year, what does he have that I do not have right now? Or what does he do? What does he not do that I actually do right now? What do I need to actually release and let go of? And then, so, so that's number two. And then number three, um, I think just to add on to this and everything that we've talked about is like getting around people that are going to raise your standards. You're not going to rise to your potential. You're going to fall to your standards and systems. And that's why we built the community. That's why we built the community out to where it's like the new standards are work working and actually like enjoying and having a work balance life. But like the reason why a lot of people aren't successful in the industry is not because they don't work enough. It's because they actually don't focus enough when they do work. They say they work 60 hours a week, but like, how much are you actually working? Are you working 15, 20 hours? Like you're not working 60 hours a week. If you were, then you would actually be work like way further than where you actually are right now. Is exactly. there anything else you want to add? No, dude, that's massive. That's massive. And guys, if you're going to, if you look at somebody that's like a million dollars a year earner, like I always like to look at, at who they were on the way up because not everybody that reaches a million dollars a year, some people get stagnant and you don't want to be that person unless that's you, right? But like their habits at a million dollars a year may not be the habits that, that it's going to take to get to a million dollars a year. Yep. Their habits may have changed. Look at who they were on the way up to a yep. million dollars a year. 
what did they have to do? What sacrifices did they have to make? What input did they put into their business? Um, and that's that's really the last thing I want to touch on, man. There was some absolute bombs dropped on this podcast. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to, again, subscribe right now to the channel. Uh, if you haven't followed us or subscribed to our channels personally, Austin Mitchell and Johnny Nidfan, they'll be in the description. Uh, and then we also have a free school community that we're actually – uh, about to release, or if you're watching this right now, we may have released it. So apply right now. There's a little link down below. Uh, apply to our free school community right now. Uh, and then if you actually want to work with us, right? If you actually want to be coached by us personally, uh, we actually have a community where we help life insurance agents scale and, and give all the lessons and way more that we talked about in this podcast uh, to be able to help you get to that next level. Um, so there's actually a calendar link. Go ahead and fill that out. Uh, and get on one of our calendars and you'll actually speak with us and, and see if it's actually a fit to be able to get to that next level a lot faster. So we'll see you guys in the next podcast. Can't wait to see you there. Don't forget to share, to share this with a friend if you found it valuable and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out guys. So